वेलकम टू पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर पंकज टंडन अटोमिक एनर्जी रेगुलेटरी बोर्ड मुंबई द सब्जेक्ट बायोफिजिक्स एंड द मॉड्यूल ऑन विच वी आर टॉकिंग टूडे इज रेडिएशन सेफ्टी इन न्यूक्लियर इमेजिंग एंड रेडियो न्यूक्लाइट थेरापी इन दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक वी हैव वेरियस ऑब्जेक्टिव फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट थिंग इज द एडवांसमेंट टेकन प्लेस इन न्यूक्लियर मेडिसिन टिल डेट डिफरेंट डायग्नोस्टिक एंड थेरापेटिक प्रोडक्ट्स इन न्यूक्लियर मेडिसिन रेडिएशन सेफ्टी एस्पेक्ट्स ड्यूरिंग हैंडलिंग ऑफ रेडियो न्यूक्लाइट रेडिएशन प्रोटेक्शन फॉर नर्सिंग स्टाफ एंड विजिटर्स ऑप्टिमाइजेशन ऑफ रेडिएशन डोज टू नॉन टारगेट टिश्यूज एंड मैनेजमेंट ऑफ रेडियो एक्टिव वेस्ट इट मीन्स इन दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रेजेंटेशन वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक वॉट आर एडवांसमेंट टेकन प्लेस वॉट आर द यूजेस वॉट आर द डिफरेंट ऑप्टिमाइजेशन प्रोसेस how the radiation protection we have to take care what are the radiation safety aspects and further the radioactive waste which is being generated how to manage the waste being generated in past few decades major advancement in the nuclear medicine practices have been based on the development of new radio pharmaceutical especially products for radio nuclide therapy it means what as the time is passing out different type of radio nucleotides have been produced but the most advancement if you see in last few years has been taken place in the field of therapy also large amount of doses for even diagnostic studies are in common with the increasing use of technetium radio pharmaceutical which is the workforce or workhorse we should say for perfusion imaging of myocardium and brain and imaging lesions with peptides and proteins accordingly practice in nuclear medicine departments particularly in the hospital radio pharmacy wing have to be very carefully planned implemented and monitored keeping in mind the radiation safety of staff public and environment when we talk about technician products as we all know that conventional nuclear medicine is totally based on the technetium 99m products recent generation of technetium 99m products comprise compounds for imaging blood flow to myocardium and brain imaging lesions such as infection inflammations tumor and thrombus formation appropriate care and radiation safety procedure should be ensured at all stage formulations handling injections and imaging actual retention of activity in organ of interest could be just a fraction of injected injected activity done with much of the injected activity is being corrected into urine over a few hours it means what it means to say ki whatever the radio nucleides which is being administered which is technician and product for any kind of imaging we have to be very very careful of the urine which is being excreted out in a few hours thus it is not only the concern of exposure to occupational worker and surrounding personnel but also possess potential contamination problems as far as radiation safety is concerned which is the topic which we are talking about today the most important thing is from the radio nucleide which is produced to be administered and final the waste which is generated in case of excretion of urine in the last on the few hours after the administration of radio nucleide we have dealt with a product which is generator based technetium 99 now we talk about the cyclotron products which gives spec product indian 111 products are mainly useful in cases of delayed imaging needs among the most important indian 199 products a special mention can be made of indian 111 labeled peptides or labeled octreotides for imaging tumors of neuroendocrine origin it means the spec product the product which is used for spec purposes indium 111 is also playing a very important role but it is a cyclotron produced radio nucleide iodine 123 it is again used for diagnostic purposes but it also a cyclotron produced radio nucleide Iodine 123 MIBG is a very good marker for myocardial imaging, but due to its logistics problem of accessibility to pure iodine 
have been precluded wider utilization of this product despite their important clinical practice. What does it mean? It means to say we can able to use iodine 123, a very a product for many, most of the imaging purposes, but how to get this product? Because this product is not a reactor produced product, but is a generator produced product having a half life of 13 hours. 13 hours half life is very, very good for treatment and for diagnostic purposes. But because of logistics reasons, it is not much in use because it requires cyclotron transfer production. Now it comes to the PET products. PET products means what? The product which is a positron emission, which is being product produced from cyclotron. As we know, when we talk about conventional nuclear medicine, technetium 99 is the work horse. Similarly, in case of molecular imaging, fluorine 18 is one of the most important radionuclides, which is being used in most of the examination. When fluorine 18 is labeled with a compound called glucose, or we call fluorodeoxyglucose, it is being used because our cells will not understand when we take glucose or fluorodeoxyglucose, it feels that they are getting fluorodeoxyglose and because fluorodeoxyglose is having a fluorine 18 content in that and fluorine 18 is a positron emitter, it means you can able to find out the region of what is the problem in the cell at a very, very early stage. It was originally proposed for estimating regional cerebral blood flow and shown as a good activity during variety of mental functions since glucose is a source of energy for brain. Similarly, O15 and carbon 11 labeled receptor radiopharmaceuticals are used for investigation in patients for neurological disorder. When we talk about cardiology, FDG is playing a very, very important on cardiology also in order to detect the myocardial function or myocardial viability studies. Oncology nowadays, oncology without PET CT does not work. It means PET CT is very, very important to find the tumor metabolism or better grading or staging indicator of tumor prognosis. It means when we talk about PET products, it is being used in neurology, in cardiology and in oncology. If you see the spectrum of major therapeutic applications, till now we are talking about diagnostic applications, now we talk about therapeutic applications. Radioiodine in thyroid disorder including thyroid carcinoma. When we talk about thyroid disease, we always come across in our mind the isotope radioiodine. Similarly, iodine 131 MIBG in tumor derived from neural crest. Intra-RTL therapy, example radio lab labeled lipidol and hepatocellular carcinoma, 120 millicury activity is used. Intra-cavity therapy, intraperitoneal, intraperitoneal, intrapericardial, intrathecal, intracystic, radioimmunoid therapy, radionuclear therapy for benign disorder like gold 198 or yttrium 90 colloids, which is being used in rheumatic arthritis and other inflammatory joint disease and we always term, use the term cyanovectomy. Intravascular radionuclide therapy for prevention of stenosis of the heart muscles, labeled hormone therapy, radiopeptide therapy. It means we have started with a therapy for thyroid disorder and now today we are talking about radiopeptide therapy. The most important thing which we come across in case of radionuclide therapy is how to choose the isotope. The isotope choice should be dependent on the basis of half-life the energy of particulate emissions, volume to be irradiated, type of alpha emitters, which is auger, conversion electron emitters, hard beta emitters and soft beta emitter, how easily we can able to produce and what is the logistics. If we see all these things from Indian context, apart from the well-known iodine 131 and P32, which is being used for bone metastasis, a time was there when we talk about thyroid disorders. Iodine 131 is a choice of isotope and we talk about bone metastasis P32. But now there are different kind of radionuclides of high relevance and practically available like Samarium 153, Holmium 166, Yttrium 90, Lutetium 177, Rhenium 186 
and the combination of 186 and 188 uranium. Now, as you know, okay, whether you use diagnostic uh, uh, radionuclide for diagnostic purposes or radiopharmaceutical for therapeutic purposes, in case of therapy purposes, we all know the activity which is going to be used in much higher quantity. Diagnostic is not much. So, when we talk about therapeutic radiopharmaceutical, owing to the renal route of excretion, patient preparation and precaution for safe discharge radioactivity needs to be taken with the radiopharmaceutical. It means to say, Ki whatever the excretion is taking place from the from the patient, we have to take care of that also because finally it is going to give hazard to the environment. Now there are different kind of uh, radionuclides which are available. I was talking about uh, for cyanovectomy purpose for the treatment of joints like samarium 153, uh, phosphorus 32, yttrium 90, dysprosium 166, holmium 166, and uh, rhenium 186, 188, rhenium and gold 198. And these radio pharmaceuticals are being used for the treatment of joints. Now, when we see this particular table, there are different kind of uh, nucleides which are available, which are of potential use in case of therapy. It is started from P32 and finally, we talk about uh, gadolinium and their half-lives and what type of particle is being emitted, what is different kind of energy. So, and what is the principal gamma available because uh, when we talk about uh, therapy based uh, radio pharmaceutical, we have to see to it whether what is the gamma component in it because there are certain radionuclides P32. If you see in this table, the first uh, slide, uh, first uh, nuclide which is P32, it does not have any gamma, it is a pure beta emitter and pure beta emitter is always good for the treatment purposes, but we have certain kind of radionuclide which emits gamma also and gamma because of Bramstrong radiation, we can able to diagnose uh, to see it whether the radionuclide is at particular position or not. Now, this particular uh, list goes on, it starts from holmium 166 and finally, we have iron, though we have many, uh, but still nowadays we are working on lutetium and rhenium based isotope, though we started with uh, P32 and iodine 131. In between, we have used holmium, we have used many of the products based samarium 153, but uh, now the choice of radionuclide which is most important being used is for lutetium and now we are going for rhenium therapy. We are coming with alpha therapy which is one of the latest technology, with latest uh, being used uh, for the treatment of, uh, treat for the treatment purposes. Now, when we talk about radiation safety, the important thing uh, which come across is the routine the hospital routine, uh, how to order this radionuclides. Radiation safety does not mean that when we started handling the radionuclides uh, while dispensing, while injecting, but radiation safety plays a very important role uh, starting from the ordering of this particular isotope and then finally, how to receive this. And once you receive it, you have to make sure that the packet is uh, expect and no unauthorized person will open it upon arrival. It is not an ordinary package. It is uh, the package which is uh, which is having some kind of labels which tells that it is radioactive. And before unpacking, check the package in case of damage, contact your RSO and finally inform the regulatory body. So, this is uh, the way I would like to state that uh, that radiation safety is not when we talk about uh, while handling the radionuclide, but it talks about while ordering the radionuclide still unpacking it. Now, we come to the storage, how to store the iodine 131. We have received, though we have received the radionuclide at our end, but again, how to store this? And iodine 131 plays a very, very important role because iodine 131 is a high energy gamma, 364 kV it comes. When we talk about technetium, it gives 140 kV. The radionuclide should be stored in a controlled area according to national regulation and local rules. We have a national regulatory authority at Atomic Energy Regulatory Board. And we have to follow all the rules in such a way, ki not only from ordering to received and finally, when it comes to your department, how to store this iodine 131. It should always be stored in lead container. You cannot just keep it outside because it is a gamma emitter. To reach an acceptable external dose rate, an adequate thickness of lead is generally required. A lead container which is meant for iodine 131 may not be used for other isotopes. So we have to see to it, the radionuclide which we are using or radionuclide which we are going to store for temporary purposes, then what basically the choice of uh, thickness of the lead should be there. Otherwise, 
there is no point. If you are going to store iodine 131 in a glass bottle, it is not going to help you much because the gamma rays which is being emitted from this iodine 1 is going to come out. That this particular slide talks about ki you have to have a proper shielding material for storing all these radionuclides. Now, isotope has been stored, now you have to dispense. Dispense is means you are going to make the doses. You need a protective clothing for that. You have to have a lead shield like bench top shield, vial shield because you are basically dispensing it from a larger dose to a smaller dose. Keep the vial in the fume hood and on a tray with lips lined with plastic bag absorbent pads. What does it mean? It means to say you cannot store the bottle at any places. It should be stored in a proper tray which is having a plastic, which is having absorbent sheets. So even if something goes wrong, the absorbent sheet which is available is going to absorb the spills which has taken place because of the tilt of the vial. Now the, you have to handle the vial with forceps or similar long handle instruments. Cover the vial with lead after use. The cap of the lead bottle has to be kept back. Check the activity before administrating to the patient. Fill in the necessary records. Every point from protective clothing to dispensing to checking the activity and final finger record, radiation safety plays a very, very important role. Now, we are, when we have to do the internal transport, what do you mean by internal transport? Internal transport means that you have dispensed the activity in one room, but you are going to take that activity for administration to the patient in the scanning room. You cannot just hold it in a hand and take it. Usually people does like that. You have to have to internal transport mechanism so that if the administration radio formula to the patient takes place far from the dispensing room, you have to have a transport container with absorbent pack. Make sure that a warning sign in on the container together with patient having name, activity and date so that to avoid misadministration. Try to follow the most direct route avoiding more heavily occupied area usually. Regulatory authority always sees to it when the layouts are approved that you should not carry out the work in three or four different rooms. The activity administration room and the hot lab should be near to each other so that the activity should not move from one end to other end. What are the precautions to be taken before administration so that to avoid misadministration? Be prepared for any emergency situations. We have to be. Any kind of any kind of work which involves some kind of hazard, we should have emergency plans ready with it. Careful identification of the patient, hospital routine should be followed. Why the patient should be identified? Because it should not so happen that those which is prepared for one patient, we are going to administer to the other patient. You have to ask different questions to the patient, at least for a lady patient. Are you pregnant? Are you breastfeeding? In case of old patients, you are incontinent, whether you are feeling with nausea, whatever living conditions you are having when you go back home, in case of therapy, take radio, radionuclides for therapy purposes, what type of work you are doing, what are the transport you are going to use when you go back home. These questions are very, very important questions when we are going to use the radionuclides for therapy purposes because we are going to administer the isotope in larger quantity having long half-lives. Verbal and written individual instructions to the patients should be given. Now we know basic safety series. Now it has come to GSR. Pregnancy, if the patient is pregnant, the registrant and licensee shall ensure for nuclear medicine that. What is registrant? The facility is registered and the name which is called registrant. The license is the person under whose name the license is issued to use the radioactive material or to procure the radioactive material. They have to ensure when the patient is pregnant that and at least for therapeutic purpose that what are the clinical indication whether this can be avoided or not or whether we have some other kind of therapy available so that we should not give a radionuclide 
So, these examinations whether for diagnostic or therapy in case of pregnant has to be ensured by registered licensee before radionuclide is to be administered. We have an ICRP annals and this very well clearly says that radionuclide easily crosses the placenta and therapeutic doses can pose significant problems for the fetus particularly in permanent hypothyroidism. It means the major problem comes if the, if the, if the lady is pregnant and if you are giving adenine 131 for the treatment of thyroid or any kind of therapeutic dose, then it may so happen the fetus may have a permanent hypothyroidism. In case of breastfeeding, suppose a woman is a breastfeeding age, it means they have a kid which requires to be fed it by breast. In case such registered licensee has to ensure that for mother in lactation, discontinuation of nursing be recommended until the radio pharmaceutical is no longer secreted in an amount estimated to give an unacceptable effective dose of nursing. It clearly shows that some kind of secretion takes place. It means these questions are very very pertinent and to be asked to the pregnant woman or in case of breastfeeding woman having a kid which requires breastfeeding that you have to suit her to stop this kind of thing because otherwise the activity is flowing from one end to other end. As we discussed in the previous slides, the nausea is one of the important thing because you have to ask whether the patient is feeling having NVD syndrome, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea after giving the activity because sometimes people feel that radioisotopes gives, gives likes to this kind of thing, it does not have but because of psychological problem, if it leads to such kind of incidence then you have to take the information. You have to talk about living conditions. How many people are living in your house? How many children you have? Whether you have a separate room? How, what type of work you are doing? What type of children? Whether you are working with children? Whether your worker is, uh, co-worker is pregnant? And after the uh, administration when you are going back home, what type of transport, transport you are using? How much time you are going to be there? These are very, very important things to know it because to decide a radiation safety not at not when the patient is in the department but we have to take care of their general public their relatives and their visitors safe administration any isotope why we are always talking about adding 131 because we are going to give this particular isotope in large quantity so whenever you give this isotope try to give in a control area like hot lab or the patient hospital bedroom a plastic bag for containment, contam, uh, for contaminated items should be available as well as paper tissues. The patient is asked to stand on the floor covered with absorbent pads and the floor beneath the patient should also be covered absorbent pad. Why this is required? Because this is required if you are giving the ad administration, if you are giving the activity by oral route and because of some reasons the patient vomit or patient sneeze, the activity comes out. During that time we require absorbent pads. If the admin, ad, iodine 131 is administered in capsule form, nowadays most of the places, most of the hospitals are using the iodine 131 in capsule form. They do not use liquid because we get iodine 131 in capsule for different denominations. So, it is going to have less hazards as far as spillage is concerned. Iodine 131 is administered in oral solution, some hospital they are using iodine liquid form because they feel this is the method where they can able to dispense the activity of their choice instead of depending on the capsule where the activity is fixed. They have to well assure that vials which are being used for sucking this particular iodine uh, 131, we have to see to it, it has to be washed thoroughly so that once it drinks, the patient drinks completely everything should go inside and nothing should be left out. Intravenous administration because sometimes uh, the patient uh, requires administration intravenously uh, when the patient is in the ward. But you are not given the iodine uh, 131 in the oral form, but you have to intravenously and slowly you have to inject it should go in the blood pool. There it plays a very important role because finally that particular uh, bottle uh, from where you are injecting activity, they are all uh, becomes radioactive, the waste being generated. 
So put the radionuclide in an infusion bottle, line the bottle to the patient using intravenous catheter, keep the patient in bed until the bottle is empty and remove the bottle and catheter and dispose of the radioactive waste. This particular slide is very, very important as far as the radioactive waste is being generated because finally the activity has gone inside the patient. It is well mixed with the blood flow. It has gone to the place where it is to be treated. But after the treatment, whatever the bottle, syringe, catheter is left out, they are all as radioactive waste. We have dose limitations for comforter and visitors of patient also. That is why if you see in many, most of the hospital, we use the term isolation wards. What do you mean by isolation wards? Isolation ward is a type of ward where the patient have to be uh, kept after the administration of uh, activity for a time because they have to be away from uh, their relatives and the visitors, you can say. But no doubt they are having certain uh, limits being framed for comfort and visitors. But we have to see to it that most of the time these patients are not to be in general ward. The dose to the comforter shall be constrained so that so it is unlikely that his her or her dose will exceed 5 millisievert fever during the period of patient diagnosis, examination or treatment. The dose to children visiting patients who have ingested radioactive materials should be similarly constrained less than 1 millisievert. It means we have two limits. One is for general public who is they are coming and for meeting the patient, usually we try to avoid and it should be discouraged uh, that uh, during isolation their relatives and friends should not be there. They can come visit uh, from a longer distance and go away. But even if the patient requires some kind of uh, relatives because of their age or because of certain disease, then the limits have been prescribed uh, for them as they are acting as a comforter as 5 millisievert. This particular slide uh, which uh, talks about iodine 131 is when the patient has gone home. This person is a person who talk about radiation safety officer. What exactly he is doing it? Uh, he is basically monitoring the patient uh, after, before the discharge. Okay, how much activity is left out in the iodine of iodine 131 in the thyroid and the whole body and based on the uh, national uh, regulatory limits whether the patient can be discharged or not because each country is having different limits for discharge of the patients. Like in our country, we have uh, 30 millicurie, it means uh, the dose rate is 3 to 5 uh, microsievert. We can able to discharge 30 to 50 microsievert, we should say we can able to discharge the patient. And um, this patient has to be monitored and readings are to be noted down and using second day, most of the cases, second day the patient can go home. The radiation safety officer feels that the patient cannot be discharged and he has to be kept in the ward. But if uh, the regulatory limits are been fulfilled, in such case the patient can be discharged. There are different kind of instructions which are to be given. Now the, when the patient is coming as OPD cases or in certain times, the patient has to be discharged and they have to go and stay with their relatives. That uh, what type of eating habits they should have, where to sleep, how far they have to be away from the children, what are the different precautions to be taken like no eating and drinking during the first hours after the treatment. During the following two days, you should drink more water so that it should be excreted out and plus two to three times after every use, keep the the toilet and the flow clean, wash your hands frequently and take a shower every day, avoid close contact with members of the family, children and pregnant women according to the timetable attached, avoid solid waste and at the last contact the nuclear medicine staff in case of any problem or questions. So these, treat, these type of instructions are usually given though we used to get instructions when we go for general type of for treatment with the doctors but in case of nuclear medicines. The reason is because it is not because the instructions are to you but uh, the instructions are to be given to how to protect how, to, uh, how the precautions are to be taken for their relatives and for the friends and the children etc. Hospitalized patient. Now the patient has to be hospitalized. When we are talking about the patient has to be hospitalized means the patient is in isolation ward. Separate room with toilet and shower, buy a separate toilet and separate washroom is required. It should be attached with that because when you are going in a general toilet type of contamination, type of radioactive, radioactivity is therefore in case of, uh, in case of isolation ward, the 
the toilet attached should be separate. And uh, what are the patient instructions should be given in verbal, written both cases because sometimes the patient won't understand your language. So you have to see to it, get the patient understand your language. Always rules should be made in local language for nursing the patient, rules in local language for visitors, rules in local language for decontaminations, rules in local language for emergency situations. It, it clearly defines that uh, you, your patient, your relative, the relatives of the patient, the visitors and the staff should know about the radiation and it should be displayed, the rules should be displayed. It should be uh, verbally uh, in, informed to them and if sometimes required it should be given writing to them. Now patient instruction, you have to tell to the patient, see uh, you have to be in the room, you have to drink as much as possible so that the dose to the bladder can be, can be uh, reduced because finally all activity has to be excreted through urine. Eat lemon slices, why lemon slices? Because lemon slices will help to uh, reduce the doses to the salivary glands. Use only the private toilet and flush three times. What does it mean? It means that you have to use your own toilet. The toilet should be attached with the room. And whenever you go to a toilet, you have to flush two or three times so that there should not be any contaminated on the, on the, uh, on the, on, on the place where you are using the toilet and all. Wash hands well with soap water after using the toilets. Wear footwear when leaving the bed. In the event of vomiting or incontinence, notify the nurse immediately. It may happen psychologically because of some other reasons, not because of radioactivity. You may feel like vomiting. You may feel like uh, incontinence. In such cases, you have to notify the nurse immediately so that the proper action can be taken. Now, in the few slides, before we have talked about uh, instructions to the patient, instruction to the visitors. Now, with instruction of nursing staff, reduce time spent with the patient by planning ahead and working efficiently, work as far from the patient as possible, practice preventive measures against contaminations like uh, wear impermeable protection gloves, wear shoe covers, wear a protective gown and remove protection clothing before leaving the room. These are the instructions to be given to the nursing who is taking care of the patient who is in isolation ward. Now comes to the visitors, visitor warning walk, warning card is to be given. So when the visitors, they are not the general visitors who are coming to see the general patients. Basically they are coming to visit the patient who is in isolated. Usually it should be discouraged but because of uh, reasons they come and they try to meet. The patient you are all about to visit has received a therapeutic dose of radioactive iodine. It is in your interest to protect yourself as much as possible from receiving more radiations than is necessary. To assist you in meeting that and we offer the following recommendations. Visitors are discouraged for a 48 hours period after the patient receives the treatment because at that time the activity in the body is in much higher quantity. Pregnant women and children under the age of 18 are not permitted to visit because they are more sensitive, their ages are more sensitive towards radiations. You should keep your visit short, not le less than 30 minutes. Keep a reasonable distance. Usually it has been seen in our, in, in, in our country that when the patient goes, when the patient relatives comes in the ward, they used to sit and just start chit chatting. But the same scenario or same thing cannot be followed in case of patient who is in isolation ward. Do not kiss or touch the patient. Usually we go, when the children is there or elderly patient is there, we try to kiss their forehead. Do not do that. Do not eat, drink, smoke in the patient room. Basically, we try to see to it the patient relative should not enter the room. They should be away. Do not touch the toilet or sing in the patient room. Don't even try to go there and don't touch the toilet because of any reasons if it are, we are making as a comforter. If you are taking old patient, don't touch the toilet seat and all because all contaminated. And any queries you are having, last line it is written, you can ask the nursing staff. Whenever you want to discharge the patient, as I told that you are going to monitor the patient at a distance of 1 meter and you will feel that the patient activity or radiation level is uh, about 30 to 50 microsievert, it means 3 to 5 mR. Activity may be in the range of 30 millicurie or uh, 1110 
mega background. The patient should be instructed about a general precaution for our patient. So, when the patient is to be discharged, other instructions are to be given by radiation safety officer to them. Now, suppose a contamination has taken place because of any reason in the heart lab or maybe when the patient has been administered the activity, patient vomiting and activity spill has taken place, the RSO should supervise the removal of contaminated waste. The decontamination of the room and equipment and should make a documented final survey of the room. Monitoring a decontamination must be done prior to entry of nursing and housekeeping staff to prepare the room for the next patient. Third and foremost important thing is when the survey and decontamination procedures are completed, the RSO will remove the radiation warning sign and notify the nursing and housekeeping staff that the room is now ready for general use. It means it is the duty of radiation safety officer to supervise and finally when everything is right to make a sign over there that patient can be used for, the room can be used for other patient. Now when all these things are happening, when you are treating the patient, when the patient goes home in case of diagnostic or therapy, there are some kind of waste is being generated. This is not a normal waste, these are radioactive waste. It shall be collected, segregated and disposed according to national regulations and local rules. If it is biomedical waste, definitely local rules have to be followed. If it is a radioactive waste, then rules from our regulatory authority has to be followed. Try to avoid solid waste. Do not use paper plates or disposable cups of flatware. We generally people use it because they feel that, okay, this is a waste, paper cups and disposable cups are used. But what exactly, this is going to create a solid waste. So try to use, try, try do not use such kind of uh, plates. It is better to use other steel plates and all those things which can be washed and so the uh, waste can be minimized. Use regular dishes, glasses and utensils. Wash them in the sink or dishwasher. Tissues and paper napkins should go to the toilet, not in the garbage, because it is going to increase the waste in the garbage. Food residues should be avoided during first week. When you are in the ward, don't eat apple cores, chicken, bones, etc. Because activity is being excreted by other means and it is going to create the cores and chickens, bones and all those things are to be radioactive. Finally, we are increasing the solid radioactive waste. Article contaminated with the body fluids that cannot be washed, clean or disposed of in the toilet should be stored for decay. There are many items like clothes where you cannot just send it for washing or cleaning purposes in the laundry. You have to keep it for a long time till the radiation level comes out so that it can be used, it can be sent it for uh, washing and finally it can be reused. In case of death of the patient, now the patient with uh, activity has been died. It is not a simple thing to manage, to manage such kind of patients because that patient body uh, cannot be given to the relatives directly because it is having the activity in that. So there are certain rules and regulations given by the National Regulatory Authority that has to be followed. And uh, see to it, before burial and before cremation or after cremation, it has to be seen to it. There are certain guidelines to be followed whenever the patient death takes place. During death of the patient, uh, precaution that should be given are depending on the residual activity and the expert advice given by radiation safety officers and may involve following. Preparation for burial or cremation should be controlled by a competent person. It means radiation safety officer should super supervise such kind of operations. Relatives should be prevented from coming into close contact with the bats body with the body and people should not be allowed to linger in the presence of the coffin. All personnel involved in handling the cops should be instructed by the radiation safety officer and monitored if appropriate. All objects, clothes, documents, etc. that might have been in contact with the diseased must be treated for, for contamination. It may be expedient to wrap the cadaver of waterproof material immediately after that to prevent spread of contaminated fluids if any which is coming out. Embalming of cadavers should if possible be avoided because we do not want to keep the body for longer time because if you are going to the embalming of the dead body, basically you are going to get the dose. Autopsy of high radioactive cadavers should be restricted or to the absolute minimum and not do not try to do that because it will not help because activity is in throughout the body, it is in the blood pool. In summary, we can say that uh, future of nuclear medicine will be dominated mostly by the newly developed diagnostic and therapeutic products procedures, but we have to see to it uh, as far as therapeutic radionuclides are concerned, 
we are more worried about it because activity being used in larger quantity. Consequently, there is a need for greater awareness of radiation safety design, during design, during practice and monitoring in nuclear medicine department. In the interest of bringing, uh, bringing benefits to needy patients, all the safety related measures would warrant utmost attention for implementation and sustenance. You have to be very, very careful as far as radiation safety is concerned because it may lead to some kind of hazard if not been properly taken care of. Thank you very much.